G'day, how you doing? Ian Apolis here, your acrylic guru from Australia. Welcome to my video. Just going to do a night lake scene, kind of American tall tree, some reflections in the lake here and some stars in the sky. Get some uh, sizes up there in centimetres and inches. Uh, this is only a small canvas today and we're going to get some colours going up the screen as well. That way you can pause it, write them down, watch the video one or two times and then paint along with me. All right, so I'll bring you over here and I'll just show you what I've drawn on my canvas. I've got it standing up right in the portrait layout. I've done the horizon half lower than halfway and I've got a side hill there reflecting in the water. We're going to have a tall tree here, some smaller evergreens in the distance. This will be glassy flat water and we're going to have a light glow just going down the horizon with some beautiful stars. You saw the painting in the opening credits, so that's pretty much me pencil in. You don't need to do this, but I'll just put it there for the video's sake. Let's get this craft white and a bit of retarder mixed up thoroughly, and then we can prime in the sky area first. Because I want to, I'm not going to, you can just cheat or be basic and put a simple black sky, but I want some of those loud colors you have in the deep space sky like your purples and your yellows and stuff dark blues all right and the magenta now i'm going to bring that down roughly to my mountain area there and just push all that into the canvas that way i can do my sky and i'll start light and darken it up as i need it because if i painted it black and tried adding some lighter values it might not work too well Okay, now just wipe that brush and I'm picking up some Indian yellow and we'll have right down in the gully where the mountain dips in the middle of the painting, okay? Which is right about here, so I want to get that glow there. Let it wear away if you want, keep it straight. So you've got your hill here, you've painted that white and you've got that dip filled in with your yellow. Now I've just wiped the brush again and we're going to pick up the quinacridone magenta and we want to get this above there, come up a bit, ooze that into that yellow just like that, beautiful. That way we've got very little yellow there but enough to be seen. And we can pick up some more of this, make it dark, there we go. This is going up into the sky now. I want to wipe that brush again. Now I'm picking up some dioxine purple. This is going to start creating the dark colours in our sky now. So we'll get this all over there nice and dark. And we'll bring it down to that magenta. Beautiful. Pick up some more of that dark dioxine. That's it. Look at that. Beautiful. Nice and dark. Now start, the way we brought that red into the yellow, just bring this dioxine into that magenta there. That way we've got our beautiful dark setting sun and transferring into the sun, the starlit sky. All right, we've got that. Now I've cleaned that brush and I want to pick up some more of the magenta. Just so as we got that space thing happening in the middle of our dark sky. So I'm getting it on the tip of my bristles there. And I probably want something just about here. So I'm just going to stamp it in there like that. Fine. That'll do. I'll try and sit it down a bit. That'll do. Now I've just got some black. I've got carbon black here and we're going to just put our real dark blacks in now. So in my mind, I wanted a black sky, but I've just added all that color detail there. Now we're gonna get at least the tops dark with this black and just get pockets of black using the tips of the brush and blend this through everything, some here. Because we're gonna put space cloud mist in the sky, pick up some more black. Don't go too mad with this black, I'm very, gingerly smiley face brush stroking it into there 
and this will show up and it's going to show up that dioxine as well and before we get started we've got to put our stars in the sky i'm going to sit that magenta down a little bit just virtually getting the black where i want it now before we put the stars in i want to grab some titanium white out of the tube i'm just using a fan brush here and i've got a couple of different blending brushes I want to use just to blend this mist into the sky and then we'll use a toothbrush to spray some stars. So now I want very lightly, it's going to pick up that magenta. If anything, this is going to be the band coming down the sky as you normally get. So we're sinking this into that white, I mean the coloured paint there. Don't go too far. And we want to turn this into blendable turmoil, different values. Look at that. Bang. Pull your brush off and wipe it and go again. This has got no hard, solid, bright edges like there. We want to blend all that in. There we go. And if anything, wipe your brush. I'm blending it in a long grain of rice shape on this on its edge a bit tilted towards 11 o'clock just blend it's picking up all that magenta which I wanted it to do down here turn all a bit now you can still play with that like okay get some more of it maybe here adding different values a little bit at a time no rush just remember no rush to do your painting Paint as slow as you want. There we go. This will add more depth and value to our sky. I'm doing this first because I don't want to put the stars on and be caught smudging them into smears all over the page. And we might put a bit of, I don't know, a bit of a glow here somewhere, just like that. Smear it. Get the turmoil. Smear it. Come all the way out, smear it. Stop, wipe your brush. And after you've done a few pieces of this, give yourself time to step back from your painting. Sometimes I will walk away from the painting with my back towards the painting. I don't look at it and I turn around and quickly look at it and see what sort of shock it gives me or what stands out in my face i'm just getting rid of these looks like a laid out chicken on the table i want to get rid of that shape and just make it a bit more its own instead of looking like something there we go i think that'll do okay that'll do now i want to spray some stars in the sky i'm just going to use this flowing white paint here because it's a lot softer than the um, titanium white out of the tube and it spits a lot better. And then we'll just get some stars up into the sky. Lots of stars. Get them up there. And then concentrate. I need a bit more of this paint. Concentrate and try and get yourself a couple of nice big ones. Nothing too big, but just enough to show distant suns in the background. You know, because well, I think the big ones in the sky are pretty much suns in other solar systems who knows oh, we can probably get a brush and put bigger ones there but i want mainly a concentration now of stars as you get in the milky way coming up this band here so i'm going to concentrate just there like that i don't want to destroy too much of the blending that i've done but we've got a concentration of stars there Grab yourself a liner brush and wet it and pick up some of the good titanium white and we'll just stamp on some deliberate big stars so as they're not all little tiny ones up there. So I might put one just about here, nice big one. That's it. Maybe something can clear that one up a bit. Something like that. Just some deliberate big ones here and there. 
boom and maybe something over here that'll do now I've got some black gesso and I'm going to use my flat filbert cat tongue brush and finding pretty much your horizon line which is about there just roughly get the bottom in and then we want to start stamping this nice and hairy at the edge you don't want a nice sharp edge you want it nice and hairy just to emulate distant trees in the background okay now if you don't have um, black gesso just use a darkest color you got okay that'll do for there I want some of that a little bit hairier I want to try and make silhouettes of um, evergreens there we go that'll do now we'll do the other side so I'll block it in coming down here block it in okay and then get your shapes there the way you want them I'll just put something hopefully this will work that's doing the job load your brush shape the paint on the brush and get some more little hairy bits sticking up this is way in the distance so they're not that huge somewhere there like that okay now I'm going to grab the most thinnest flat brush I could find I'll pick up some of that black gesso just so I've got like a see I can get lines there but now I want to grab some where'd the white go here it is I want to get a a lighter value of that black not too light just enough to stand out on top of that black that I put there and we want to put you know like the lights hitting some of these trees here it's very subtle mainly on top of the edge there shape your brush on your palette like sharpen it up again and we're just putting tiny little lighter value lines there just to show this is going to be covered with the big tree so let's not waste time there this paint's still wet the black so i haven't bothered drying it we'll get some here keep loading your brush up so it's nice and sharp and it's just like lights hitting a lot of these little evergreens down here like there bring some down here within the mountain don't just do a, a row all the way along the edge and make it look like a flat cardboard cutout. Some down here. And we got, and this will make up for good reflection values in the water as well when we do the reflection because it's a lake, it's going to have beautiful reflections. Now we're going to go to the bottom water section. So we're grabbing some more of that craft paint we used in the beginning with the retarder somewhere around don't have to be all the way up there because it's going to have the it's going to be the water so just along here and just get that mapped in there crisscross it in there and then stroke it left and right nice and neatly with a lot of pride yeah there we go now we're just going to transfer those colors from the sky in the water a bit I grabbed the sky colours, the yellow, the magenta and the dioxine purple and I laid that over the white and then I brush stroked it from left to right. Sorry you didn't get to see that, the camera was off when I thought it was on. And now I've just got the toothbrush and I sprayed some stars over the bottom of the water as well. I also got the mountain colour and traced it in the water underneath the horizon line and got my brush and pulled it down, adding those little grey highlights as well and pulling them down through it as well, <laughs> sorry. Now I'm just looking for pieces where it just might need a bit more detail within this reflection just to hide any hard lines and add a bit more depth within there, just keeping them up and down. You might not need to do this in yours if 
but I just feel I need to because I've got those mistakes there. All right, that'll do. I'm just grabbing some of this um, craft white that I used to put in the toothbrush. And we'll just get the horizon line smeared in there. And I use the word smear because you just want to smear it in. So I use a bullshit stick, find out where our line is, and come across there nice and thinly. And there are bits you might or you can do if you want, make it a bit fatter, who knows. And I'll use this paint because it's a lot thinner and it's not going to be so dark and heavy. You know, I was going to put some evergreens there, but I don't want to overcrowd it and complicate it. So what I'm going to do now is just grab that same brush. I've dried the water and just get some lines, very thin lines. coming over the water, over the reflection. Move this down, this will keep them all straight. And this is just sinking the reflections down into the water. Come down here a bit. I'm just using that craft paint because it's so light in body. It's not thick and bright. Okay, I've got that paint with some medium glaze in it, and now I want to do the same again, a bit bigger, just to sit a lot of that down. This glaze will dry and leave everything opaque. So I'm just putting a thin film of this over it just to act like a film of water being hit by a light. There. Careful, make sure your paint's dry because if it's not you'll start mixing it all together and turning it into mud. I've dried it but I feel I probably could have dried it a little bit more. See all this, this is going to turn very opaque. I'm sinking some of those white lines down that I feel are too loud keeping it lengthways and we'll go up here as well somewhere it's just glaze mixed with a little bit of that white there we go that'll do whoops okay let's autograph this painting and we'll whack a frame on it Check out my links in the description below. I want to thank all my patrons who support my content in my channel here. Uh, become a member of my art group. There's a link below. There's about 10 links there. Uh, check out my merchandise. You can buy custom Indianapolis merchandise. You'll never get it anywhere else but here. Okay, let's put this frame on there. Yeah, that don't look too shabby, does it? We've got a, a night sky out on a lake with some evergreens. I was going to put some big ones there, but I didn't want to start blocking everything up. You can do that if you want or leave them out like I did, okay? And just remember, you can do that. All right, and like I said, if you're new here, share, like, and subscribe. Check out the links below and check out me merchandise, all right? And if you like what I'm doing, you tell your friends and family. But if you don't like what I'm doing, you tell everybody, all right? All the best. Goodbye. Good luck. And good on ya.